So our first speaker, without further ado, is Miguel Sanz. He's from Sevilla in southern Spain. He's a member of En Lucha, and he's a local organizer of the SAT Andalusian Workers Union. <laughs> platform with these two great activists. Uh, well, I'm gonna I only have 10 minutes of 12 minutes, so I'm going to speak about the social situation in Spain and the indignados movement we had last year. Well, uh, talking about the situation in Spain is talking about recession, unemployment, addictions, and lack, a completely lack of, of future for the young people. You have to know that we are in the fourth year of the of recession. We had a bailout a few months ago. We have more than five million workers unemployed. We have 400,000 evictions in the last three years. 400,000 families that has lost their, their houses. And we have masses of poverty growing in Spain. If we talk about youth, this situation is much worse. We have, a, we have a, an employment rate among the youth that is, that is over 50%. Half of the youth workers are unemployed. I'm not talking about poor areas or unemployment hot points. I'm talking about the whole Spain. If I speak about a hot point of unemployment, for example, the city where, where I was born, Jerez, you can find a youth unemployment rate over 60%. 60%. Almost no one is, 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 is working. Uh, those that are working, 30% of them, they have a contract that lasts less than a year. So we have no perspective. We, have, we don't know how we are going to build our lives. If you want to have a reference, uh, unemployment rate, youth unemployment rate in, in the UK in March 2012 was 22%. The same unemployment, youth unemployment rate as in London in last, in last summer when you had the, the riots. Um, also, we, it's something contradictory because we have the most qualified generation in the history of Spain. People speak several languages. You have people uh, with two or three de degrees. People is really qualified. But you know, there is something even worse than being a long-term unemployed uh, with two degrees with no future. And that is living with your parents, you know. <laughs> because we have a strong housing problem in Spain. Um, in 2007, we had a very, very big movement um, for the right to have a house whose main motto, whose main slogan was, you won't have a house in your whole fucking life. It was a very popular slogan because it describes completely the situation of the Spanish of the Spanish youth. We have now with the crisis tens of thousands of young people coming back to their parents' houses. It's something frustrating, frustrating to live with your parents when, when you are 32, 33, 35 um, and you, you have no future. Um, the Housing Youth Observatory, dependent of the Spanish Youth Council, shows that to buy a house we should earn an 80% more than we earn today. I mean, um, if we want to, to keep a level of debt in a, in a couple of young people of your year under the 30% of your income, we should earn 2,300 euros per month. You know, I don't know who, is, who young people here is sending this, this, this number, but... Um, in, in fact, we have to dedicate 60% of our incomes in, in an average to buy a house or to, to rent, uh, to hire a, a house. If you go to Madrid, you have to dedicate 100 
and 2% of your incomes to pay the house. Of if you live in Barcelona, you have to dedicate 91%. So, no cinema, no beers, no going out, no eating to pay your, to pay your house. Um, so when you combine unemployment with this housing problem, you have very, very choking numbers because you, you, you see that only 40% of the young people under 35 years are living out of their parents' houses. So if you, if you take the, the people under uh, 25 sorry, 25 years old, only 10 percent are out of the parents' houses. So it's something very, very frustrating. Um, for the young people in, in, in Spain. So it's, it's not casual that the rate of video game addiction is growing so much in Spain. But, uh, you know, there is an alternative to, to the PlayStation or to becoming a Barcelona or Real Madrid supporter of the Spanish selection. <laughs> and that alternative is to fight. To fight. And last year, in May 2011, 10th of thousands of young people decided to fight and to occupy the squares and the streets in the main city in Spain for months and to ask and to demand to fight for a new future, for a new future. And that's the Indignados movement, the M15 movement that we had a year ago. This movement is not, was not spontaneous, you know. We had so many fights before, before this movement. Uh, it was very, very important the young movement for the housing that we had in 2007, but also the students' movement of 2000, uh, 2008 and 2009. These two move movements form the core of the Indignados movement. Okay? Um, we occupy the squares and the streets for three months. We, we camp there in the squares. Uh, we had the biggest demonstrations in the Spanish history, maybe we had the, the most, uh, the biggest social movement in 35 years. And, um, you know, I, I think here there must be maybe 20 or 25 people that could speak two hours about the Indignados movement because it was so important for us and so, so important for our lives and for the lives of thousands of, of, of young people that, that I have to talk a couple of minutes of minutes about this. Um, mm, the main slogan of the Indignados movement was "No one represent us," and there you have the synthesis of everything. I mean, we have no future, and all the parties, all the big parties, and unions are not doing nothing for us. So no one represent us. This movement um, took, well, I could, I could speak two hours about it, but took one year and now still alive. But, and we had a lot of ideological victories and efforts. I organized in a union and I see how, I saw how after the Indignados movement, the first summer, a wave of young people came to our union to be organized. And this is something very, very strange because there is a very difficult relationship between the unions and young people um, in Spain. We have more people, much more people organizing the anti-capitalist left after this movement. This is, I think, one, this is one of the main lessons we learned in this movement. You know, for young people in that movement, we, for masses of young people, they, they had no differences between the big parties and the small anti-capitalist and radical parties. The big unions that are part of the system and the small anti-capitalist and red union. There was no difference. We, as anti-capitalists, it was impossible to be there with our flags or to sell papers or to carry a stick of your of your group. It was impossible completely because there was so sectarian against all the, the parties and all the political groups. But the main lessons we, we learned that is that you have to be there always. Even if you have to 
put your papers away and you cannot have any propaganda of your group or you cannot say nothing about your group. You have to be there beside the movement. Because a year later, a year after the, 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 the beginning of the movement, we are growing. And we are joining people, joining people to the anti-capitalist left and to the revolutionary left. And the lesson that we learned is that you have to be there. You have to be there in any case. But um, yeah, we had a very ideological effect. But honestly, mm, we had no many material advances. We have no many success as a movement. We we are building a new left over this movement. But we have not won almost nothing yet. That's why the socialists, we are again and again saying that we have to join to break the wall between this social movement and the organized working class. This is the solution, or one of the solutions. And we saw this potential in the last general strike uh, of uh, 29th of March. We had a general strike with 10 million workers and a half striking with, in a very, very combative way with a, an ambient of general strike in the neighborhoods out of the, of the workplaces. And that's thanks to the Indignados movement. When you join a mass movement formed by, mainly by young people with the organized working class of the union, you can see how strong is our potential and how big are the possibilities to change to change the the world? Um, I I like to say oh I have to I have to finish I have to I like to say that well there are no 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 reasons to be pessimistic because now we are facing probably a new general strike after the summer um, I think. Um, we have a growing occupation movement because we have no houses and there are a lot of young people occupying houses in an organized way, in a mass way, not an isolated way. And probably what we have is that in September, the academic year is not starting in the universities because a general strike is going to hit the universities in, in September. And I think um, uh, we have to going forward, we have to continue building our movement, opening the unions to young people, and of course, recruiting people to the radical left and the socialist left. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miguel. Our next speaker is leading student activist in SWP, Alex Chandler. in August last year. So we've seen young people literally shape the world to its core with uprising, uh, uprisings against austerity. A generation has risen up who have been denied a future but continues to fight for one. And the, this explosion of fight backs in Britain started on the 10th of November 2010, almost two years ago now, when we saw the storming of the headquarters of austerity. There was a symbolic destruction and occupation of the chamber that held those who were to slash the future of young people across the country. Millbank, the code name it's now been given, represented the anger and rage that a generation of young people had and would continue to have in the years to come. It ignited not just a movement but shaped the consciousness of thousands of young people in the country by showing themselves that they have the power in their hands. Now, despite being crushed by the draconian hands of the government and austerity Europe, the recent student movement in Britain effervesced a sense of belonging, hope and confidence and a purpose to the youth whose futures were simply uh, slipping quickly from their grasp. Now, I remember, as I'm sure many of you do, being told by our parents, our teachers, our family, the media, that when we left school, we'd go to university, get a degree, have a pick at any job we wanted, our parents had it better than their parents, and we would, uh, all we had to do was get good grades, do as we were told, abide by the rules, and we would have a better future than our, than our own parents. Now, like many others on that demonstration on the 10th of November, I soon realized 
uh, I soon realised how, how, how those promises had been so severely broken. But also how wrong the system, the capitalist system is. And the anger was absolutely visceral and it still is from that demonstration. Young people and students have not just been pivotal within the student movement, but within the different uprisings like Occupy and the trade union demonstrations, they've played an important role in raising the profile and the gravity of the, the austerity measures. But they've also exposed the capitalist system for what it is and have created a great narrative around that. It's without a doubt that the student movement here provided a real breakthrough in the current struggle, and it's true that the students show the way in many cases, as, as they do so now. And this is not necessarily in actions for the moment, but in desire and demands. Whilst remembering the student movement and the influence it has had, we must also recognise the shortcomings um, that were experienced and why the student movement has for now run out of steam. As the movement grew and, and started to develop its own organs of decision making and networks, uh, it was clear to see weaknesses where different forms of organising arose. Of course, life got in the way of the continuation of, of the student movement with the realities of exams, coursework, uh, finishing university and the, and the dreaded holiday seasons. Um, however, during the in-between periods of organising and, and figuring out what, what was the next manoeuvre, um, it was proving difficult to develop a strategic outlook beyond fees and education. It was only a small minority of students who had a clear strategy to look beyond uh, the ideas of fees and education. Now, ideology played a, a significant role in shaping and organising the struggle. And it's fair to say that some people had, had an ill-informed ideology and, and half-baked ideologies were floating around everywhere. But also many activists found it very difficult to, to look beyond the defeats and the blows that the student, movements, the student movement had felt in Britain. And we went on countless demonstrations to defend EMA, to fight fees, and the government gave us nothing. But the fear in, in their live television statements, which, which you know, we saw in David Cameron's eyes. As well as this, when we saw trade unions and workers come out on strike and demonstrate on the streets alongside students and other young people, there was a slight incapability of relating to workers and strike action when it came to certain groups and networks. Now, as Paul Mason suggests, there was an absence of strategy, an absence of a line of communication through which to interact and strategize with trade union organized workers and groups. So whilst the student movement was pushed onto the back burner, there was another storm brewing amongst the working class inner city youth. The August riots were triggered by the shooting of Mark Duggan in Tottenham and the effects of this reverberated across the country. With the violating stop and searches, the racial profiling of black and Asian youth and the killings of so many at the hands of the police, young people had had enough. The shooting of Mark Duggan provided a tipping point which exposed a gaping problem underneath Britain, Britain's facade, as well as the exposing of the placating and the lies that Cameron and his cronies were churning out. If it wasn't, or, it was, if it wasn't clear already, the riots showed that we're really not all in this together. The riots reflected how disenfranchised and alienated a significant portion of youth felt living in so-called modern Britain. The Joint Guardian LSE study called Reading the Riots found the reasons behind deciding to riot, including the cutting of EMA, the increasing of tuition fees, and the everyday encounter between police and the youth. Again, the countless stop and searches, um, the, the, which included racial abuse and racial profiling carried out by police officers. There was a frustration that ran rife on the streets of big cities as the riots ensued. The heated battles with police officers and anti-government graffiti set the mood for the riots. Plan B song, Ill Manners, provides a nice little historical encapsulation of this period of riots and youth discontent. The song was actually written before the riots happened, uh, but they may well have been influenced by the student riots, because I'm sure people remember they were referred to as student riots as opposed to student demonstrations um, back when they happened. And one of his lines tenaciously and decisively points out who causes the problems for young people and the blame that the youth have to bear. So we've had it with these politicians, you bloody rich kids never listen. There's no such thing as broken Britain, we're just bloody broken Britain. Yeah. What needs fixing is the system, not shop windows down in Brixton. Now I think we should have a clear understanding of why the riots started and why they manifested the way that they did. We must understand that the violence was not on the streets during the student demos and it was not on the streets during the riots. The real violence was coming from Westminster and it still is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah.
CMA, the cuts to benefits, the increasing of tuition fees, and the amount and the amount of other slashes the government is making are violent. Yes, this coalition government are happy to scapegoat the youth in this country who are fighting for their lives. The government talk about the looting that went on during the riots, but it is us that are being looted. Our futures, our education, our jobs. That's the real and dangerous looting. I think it's also worth touching on the false freedoms that, that we're told we have, especially young people. You know, after the riots, many said that they had had the best days of their lives. Um, they said they would do it again. And, and I think these views parallel to the student movement and the experiences that were had at Millbank. A sense of control and confidence was boosted. Um, and as though, and in, it was in those moments that no one was going to take it away from any of us. Now, of course, the aftermath of the riots came with a backlash from the government and the right-wing media. A splash of hate and blame lay at, at, at the doorsteps uh, of the youth who had, who had participated in the riots. David Cameron gave a statement centred on the riots and, and there was two things that he said that really struck me. There are pockets of our society that are not just broken but frankly sick. And the second one he said was it is a complete lack of responsibility in parts of our society. People are allowed to feel the world owes them something, that their rights outweigh their responsibilities and their actions do not have consequences. Now in my opinion it sounds like these sound bites should have been written to refer to the Tories and not to the <laughs> responsibility and it is their actions that do not face consequences and it's statements like these that expose the farce and hypocrisy behind not only the Tories but the system that has allowed them to fester. Now as students uh, we look forward to the student demo in November and I look forward to smashing the consensus that the Tories thought they had um, like they did at the end of like we did at the end of 2011 and this is our fight to win and we've got to fight alongside the students, we've got to fight alongside the workers, and we've got to unite the struggles. Because as we like to say in the SWP, if enough of us spit, we'll drown the bastards. <laughs>
these are also the unemployed youth. These are also the children and the homeless and the urban poor who have, you know, occupied the streets of Cairo and demonstrated in every uh, clash, fighting the police on several occasions. And that has basically, um, you know, these rights now when, when any clash or any confrontation happens, whether with the military police or, um, or, the, or the police, um, it's, it's, it's basically a, 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 a revenge, a fight that will never end until justice does prevail. And the absence of justice is basically what accelerates the violence. So if you have been watching um, all the clashes and the confrontations that have taken place from the beginning till now, they have just gotten more and more brutal, more violent, uh, more um, very visual, visibly, um, uh, overtly violence. Like the, the amount of uh, violence that is used against the youth especially um, uh, is, is horrendous. Uh, you get, uh, I think, it's about 3,000 uh, people until now who have lost their eye uh, in this revolution. Uh, that's being targeted. Like you have, um, you know, a guy, Ahmed Harara, I'm sure he'd become a, a world figure, where he lost one eye on uh, the January of the 28th, uh, 2011, and he lost his other eye uh, in November uh, 19th during the clashes in Mohammed Mahmoud Street. In November uprising. So the youth are definitely fighting and they have everything um, to gain because the future uh, is ours and the youth are the future. Uh, I, when I first saw the topic, the title of this panel, I was surprised that you put youth and no future in one <laughs> uh, sentence. It's almost an oxymoron, but uh, <laughs> we are the future and we have everything to fight for, and if we don't fight this moment, I mean, who knows, I mean, revolutions don't come every year, like, maybe every hundred years or so. Um, so the role of uh, the youth in the revolution has been very important, uh, whether in confronting uh, the police, but also uh, organizationally and in, this, in the universities especially. We've seen uh, throughout the 18 months, uh, as the revolutionary socialists, we have grown immensely in uh, different universities. Now we have presence in uh, 18 universities. Uh, before the revolution, it was only a few, maybe the major ones only. And um, there are many successful strikes that, uh, that was led by um, revolutionary socialist students along with other groups. Um, that have basically impeached uh, deans, heads of uh, schools that were very corrupted or related to the old uh, regime. So they're not just, uh, you know, educational demands of better quality of education, of lowering uh, the fees and for calling for free education and better quality of education, but it's also uh, very much related to um, the, the neoliberal agenda, you know, the capitalist system and the militarization of these um, or the corruption that happens in the, within the administration. Uh, I can point out in two, uh, two very um, uh, big, uh, big happenings that happened were uh, in the AUC, the American University in Cairo. Uh, this was one of the first uh, big strikes that happened where it was visibly uh, apparent where you had workers and students um, organizing a strike and calling for student demands and workers' demands. And it was a truly a beautiful experience um, because I don't think it had ever happened in that time before. Workers had gone on strike. Uh, workers went on uh, strike in solidarity with them, uh, basically putting a halt on the whole university for over a week, uh, forcing the president, uh, Lisa, Lisa Anderson, to, uh, to come down to the square where they were occupying it and speak with them. I mean, it was, uh, it was truly um, phenomenal and the workers were able to organize, uh, form an independent union and gain uh, some of their demands, which uh, was very successful. Also at the German University of Cairo, this was truly a tremendous uh, fight. Uh, the, the, the union, the student union, who is, was headed by the first elected revolutionary socialist uh, president, student president, 
Uh, of course, he was impeached after, but <laughs> they dissolved, the, they dissolved the, 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 the union. But it was definitely a courageous fight because they were calling for um, a strike for tuition fees and for more political freedom uh, uh, and a new constitution for uh, the student union. The university actually sent letters to their parents and uh, closed the school for two weeks in fear of that strike. So that just shows you how powerful students can be and how afraid these uh, corrupted administrations uh, are. Uh, another group of youth that have been very, very um, involved, uh, especially recently, are the ultras or these, uh, you know, the, the, the soccer groups. Um, after the Port Said uh, clashes in February, uh, the massacre that happened where uh, over uh, 200 people were murdered uh, while police was hanging around and watching and actually closing the gates. Um, it was horrific. I actually lost, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I actually lost a friend uh, there and um, the ultras have basically never stopped mobilizing to bring back uh, justice for those people who were killed uh, by the hands somehow directly or indirectly uh, of the military and the police um, but these groups have been uh, be have become highly politicized they have uh, not just been uh, mobilizing on behalf of you know their friends who were killed but they are in the square they uh, you know take part in every political uh, demonstration uh, especially fighting uh, you know, cops, because they are, all cops are bastards, and that is all <laughs> of them. I kid you not, but uh, every street in Cairo has this uh, ACAB somewhere. <laughs> um, so, uh, to... What, what is the future of this, uh, the, what the youth can do in this revolution to make it succeed and uh, to be more effective is, I, in, my, in, in my opinion, um, I, I believe that uh, workers uh, and students, solidarity, working together uh, is very crucial and is very important. Uh, I mean, uh, we called for, um, well not we, but the political, many different groups called uh, for um, a general strike on February 11th uh, via Facebook, which we knew, I mean, that would never actually take place. Uh, many, many activists believe that that would never happen because you don't call uh, for a general strike over Facebook, at least not, <laughs> <laughs> at least not in London, I know. <laughs> um, there must be much more organization with unions and collaboration and so on, and we, we don't have yet in Egypt, uh, one single group that's rooted enough in all uh, places where they can basically pull the plug and, and, and call for a general strike. If we had that, we would have been done a long time ago, I believe. But uh, we're still working on that. So uh, the, the success in that day, February 11th, ha was basically in the universities, where we do have strong presence, where we do, where we do coordinate. So organization here and coordination is a key. And that's uh, where the youth uh, can be very effective in, in, in pulling together and getting organized in their universities, in their schools, so uh, we can do that kind of, uh, of, of, of action. Uh, so it, the, the strike was very successful in the universities. Um, almost all major universities went on strike. Some even lasted for months. Uh, but the very important uh, new thing that happened that, that day was uh, the schools. School students, people from the age of, uh, you know, 10 to 17, uh, they went on strike. They are uh, organizing on some uh, uh, small level, but uh, the fact that it happened, that was the first time since, uh, I, I think, well, 42. 1919. Yeah, 1919, basically, <laughs> that schools went on strike. So this, is, this was a very, very uh, important phenomenon. And it's continuing. I mean, there is a video clip that was shown in, uh, on YouTube where the school kids are, are, are playing during their uh, recess uh, revolution. And they're like <laughs> down with Moshir, you know, <laughs> like down with the head of uh, SCAF. And th th these are the signs that shows you what potential we have in the future. So when I say youth are the future, this is what I mean. These are the future who are going to learn how to organize now at this stage, lead 
become become leaders uh, of the working class and, and when they grow up and have this already cultural awareness. So we have every reason to, to be hopeful and to be optimistic and to definitely embrace the fight that we have in us. Thank you very much. just before the British student demonstration and I was one of the people that organised to go into the Department of Finance and take over the Department of Finance. <laughs> and I always claim to this day that the students in, in Britain actually copied off us. <laughs> but what happened, what happened at that demonstration was obviously police brutality came into it but what happened was a new politicisation in, in, the student, in the colleges that hadn't been um, for a while uh, in Ireland. Um, but just to really kind of cap, in Cork, where I live at the moment, um, recently, well, about 10, 15 years ago, they tried to bring um, fascists into our colleges to give lectures. And um, the Socialist Workers' Party were one of the, the main um, forces against that. And we had stopped it and actually this year they tried to do the same thing and it was the new students and I mean the, the universities, um, I know in Cork anyway, um, are very neoliberal, very right wing, they won't, they won't even allow more than one left wing political <coughs> organisation to set up in the college. Um, so in that backdrop we actually won a huge victory in preventing the BNP from actually coming over and speaking in our college in Cork. That was a <laughs> to what one of the speakers, the speakers were all saying was um, something was said to me like the working class is like a freight train and yes the youth and, and students can be like a spark to spark that freight train to, for moving but you always need the, the working class in order to, um, to have sustainable change but I mean the movement in general as well as the student movement um, goes up and down it's not just a straight line up where you keep moving forward and that's where the role of politics um, is very very important because it's very, it's very um, easy as a movement like the uh, 15M movement kind of recedes a little bit to, to get demoralised with the movement. But what politics does is it shows you not only the past but the future because as the movement goes down another movement is going to start up and you need to be prepared in order to take that movement forward and learn from the, uh, the things of the past. So I mean, if you're not active, um, please do get active. Uh, hi, um, my name's Mark Duncan with the Right to Work campaign, a member of the SWP. Uh, we heard from our Spanish comrade earlier about the problems of uh, joblessness and homelessness that are, are running absolutely uh, riot across Europe. And we can hear in some of the statements that are being made, especially by David Cameron uh, last week when he's uh, threatening to take housing benefit off all under 25, something that will put thousands of people on, on the streets again, like young people out of homes, um, take us back to the, the dark old days of the 80s and 90s. Um, where, where it was cardboard city, thousands and hundreds of people across the country um, living out in sleeping bags. And this is something that's got to be resisted. Like We're also facing uh, the attacks on young people's um, ability to get employment uh, with the Tory workfare uh, schemes that are making young unemployed people work for nothing and displacing the jobs that they should be paid for ways to do. Um, now through the Right to Work campaign we've had several successes alongside others like Boycott Workfare. I'm pleased to tell you that today at the start of a uh, National Week of Action we've had another success. Holland and Barrett have been booted out. Uh, uh, they've left the, the, the workfare schemes. <laughs> Just the other day we had a, a right to work demonstration alongside some housing campaigners in Defend Council Housing where we went and occupied a branch of Barclays and 
told the bankers, actually, we don't think it's all right that you're getting bailed out when we get sold out. But we can't win this, this big battle that we've got just by the small sort of guerrilla campaigns we're waging. Like, we also heard about the problems of the split between um, the young people who've been disenfranchised in Spain and the trade union movement. Now, over here, we've got a real opportunity to change that. Unite have opened up um, a community membership scheme that we want to get people involved with. It gives us a chance, those people that are alienated and separated out from the trade union movement, to fight alongside them. Unite's also come out nationally against the workfare schemes that are exploiting young people people all across Britain. Um, we want to we wanna carry on with this, we encourage people to get involved, but also we want to be right at the militant edge of the trade union movement because we've seen actually the retreats over time when we can smash and the real strength to defeat all this stuff we've seen on the big strike in November last year. We need to see those numbers on the streets again. We could see it in autumn and I want to see young unemployed people, young people who are at threat of losing their homes fighting alongside those people. And the thing that's kept me in touch with that trade union movement, with the, the edge of that trade union movement that's pushing things forward constantly is being a member of the SWP. So I'd encourage anyone in this room who isn't a member to get involved and join the SWP. <laughs> I'm Jack, I'm a member of the Socialist Workers' Party in Sheffield. Um, this is the third Marxism I've, ever, I've been to, and every year not only does it get bigger and bigger and better and better, but actually gets more and more relevant. Because we have meetings about revolutions, and we've had revolutions across the world. We have meetings about mass strikes, and Greece have had more strikes and I have clean pairs of socks. <laughs> but also we have meetings about the more worrying things, about fascism and the rise of the right, and I think that's another thing we should bear in mind, yeah. the success of Marine Le Pen and Golden Dawn in Greece and things like that. Um, but I, and Alex mentioned about kind of the youth and, and the student movement in Britain. I mean, I was involved in the student movement in 2010. For all the undercover cops that might be in this room, I was part of the Millbank demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> in November as well and give it a good, another good smashing. Um, I think it's very different this time around. I mean, what's different this time around? Because last time, right, we were very isolated. We broke that clutch consensus, but we did it very much alone. But this year, this autumn, for those who weren't at the opening rally, Martin Smith said it's going to be a hot autumn because we've got the student demonstration, hopefully going to reignite the fantastic things we saw in 2010. We've got strikes being planned in the autumn. We've got the big trade union demonstration that is going to be bigger than the March 26th demonstration that led us to J30 and then on to November the 30th, which is the largest strike that Britain's had since 1926. And I think all these things are quite important to bear in mind. And the power and energy that you can bring to a movement is something we've got to harness. But there's one word that people are, are beginning to remember that's been forgotten for a long time in this country. No thanks to the Thatcher, thank God she's on the way out. And that's solidarity. Solidarity. Yeah. Is yeah. student demonstrations along with the power to shut things down that the workers have. It's not just something that can begin to build a fight back, but that is a recipe that can smash this Tory government and I think we've got to take that away from here and get organised and bring that solidarity that is so necessary and to do that you've got to be part of an organisation that is fighting constantly in the trade unions, in the workplaces, in the students' unions, in the colleges and we've got to get together and get organised. Um, in, in the most, most, most quickest and urgent sense. Hi, um, I'm Rachel. I'm from the Defend the Right to Protest campaign. Um, we're a campaign that's inevitably worked with a lot of working class young people, um, particularly in the aftermath of the student protests and then also the riots. Um, one particular case I sort of saw a few weeks ago um, was yet another young black um, kid, basically, who was only about 18 up in court because of what happened in Millbank um, and he was actually found guilty and he was in prison for 18 months uh, and the worst thing is there was absolutely no evidence served against him at all, it was just literally all the police officers words against him and his only crime or offence that he was sort of found guilty of previously before joining the Millbank protest was he ate food in a shop because he couldn't afford to eat anymore. Um, and by the time he was up in court for Millbank, he'd also been involved in the riots and he was imprisoned for 24 months for setting a bin on fire during the August riots, allegedly. So he had, not only has he got to serve that, but he's now got to serve the 18 months on top of that um, consecutively. 
Uh, and, and those are the, typically the kind of young people that we've seen up in court, and those are the young people that need defended. So with the campaign, I really encourage people to sign up, particularly in light of the autumn term coming up. We've got a lot of young people that are going to be on the streets again, and they're going to need that support, not just people protesting, but also the campaign. Um, there's a conference in October term. I really encourage people to come along, because we're told that we have a right to protest, but actually, what we've seen is don't protest like you mean it. Don't protest like your future actually depends on it. Because actually, those are the people that we've seen in court. People that have got nothing to lose, but everything to win. Um, and those are the people that we, we need to support. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I just joined the SWP. I didn't realise there were all these people here that had the same kind of frame of mind. So I just want to say... <laughs> It makes me angry when people say that the riots were just about looting and it's true, some people were there just to loot but think about it, if you can't afford these things that's costing you every day, you need this, you need this to make you a better person, you need this to make you look good, you need this to make you smell good, all this, all that, and you can't afford these things, it changes your mind, it makes you angry, it makes you angry, you don't know what you're angry about and so coming to places like these and educating the youth so we can come here and have a community and people, I thought I was crazy, like no, ever was like, you're, you're the militant guy, we're the normal. Like, yeah, maybe you're crazy, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, thanks for that. We are talking in Spanish. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, eh, soy de Barcelona y formo parte, bueno, participo en el movimiento estudiantil de Barcelona y quería comentar algunos de los aspectos y de la situación ahora mismo de los estudiantes y de la lucha estudiantil. <laughs> I'm from Barcelona. I take part in the student movement. I would add, actually, he's a leading member of the student movement. He hasn't said that. It's very modest. <laughs> and I'm going to explain a bit about the struggles we've been having. Aunque, como explicaba el compañero de Sevilla, como explicaba Miguel, la situación ahora mismo, bueno, y en la prensa, parece que no están muy los indignados eh, tan presente porque no se están ocupando las plazas. El espíritu de la indignación, de la rabia, sigue presente en la juventud y sobre todo en las universidades e institutos. As Miguel has explained, although uh, the press don't talk about the indignados movement as much and they're not organizing the squares, what has happened is the spirit of that movement is very much alive and, uh, and inspiring struggles and resistance. Las universidades este año el movimiento estudiantil ha vuelto a surgir y ha ocupado y ha salido a las calles en cuatro huelgas generales de, de la universidad que sacaron a 70.000 personas a casi 100.000 personas la, a las calles y con un espíritu combativo y, y unitario muy importante. The student movement was reborn this, this year, inspired by the, the indignant movement. There's been four general strikes in the universities. They've got hundreds, of, tens of thousands of people on the streets. Lo más importante, sobre todo, era por un lado la inspiración, no solo del movimiento de los indignados, sino también de lo que estaba pasando en Chile, de lo que luego pasaría en Quebec, de lo que había pasado en el Reino Unido y de lo que estaba pasando por todo el mundo, también en Egipto. Quebec, Quebec, the United Kingdom, and in Egypt. El segundo aspecto más importante es que teníamos claro la cuestión de la unidad, de la unidad con los trabajadores. El movimiento estudiantil no era solo de estudiantes, sino que teníamos una plataforma con trabajadores, con profesores, y en el cual allá se decidían conjuntamente los días de huelga, las movilizaciones y las acciones a llevar a cabo. Y eso era lo más importante, la unidad. Y eso se demostró las not only, of course, we inspired the indignant movement, but also by, by the workers' movement. And we have a coordinating committee uh, in Catalonia of teachers and workers and students, which has been behind the movement on the strikes, not only of the student uh, protests, but also strikes in education. <laughs> Esta unidad no solo se veía dentro de la universidad, sino que también se tenía clarísimo fuera, con toda la clase trabajadora. En la huelga general del 29 de marzo, los estudiantes cerramos las universidades y participamos junto a los trabajadores. Y eh, además, en la hora de la lucha de mineros que está habiendo en el Estado español, en Asturias, hemos dado todo el apoyo y nuestra solidaridad con la lucha de los mineros, porque es nuestra lucha, es su lucha, es la lucha de todos.
not only have we had the question of working with workers in education, with the teachers and so on, but also the workers movement outside the universities in spite and we've been involved in this. The general strike of the 29th of March, the students closed the university and took part actively in the pickets and the demonstrations of that day of the strike. And now the students are organising solidarity with the Asturian miners. That they're struggling. <laughs> their struggle is our struggle, and we're together with them to victory. member of Equity, the Union for Members of the Performance Industry. I just wanted to share my hope and my gratitude with you guys for being here. I am actually older than the students. I graduated six years ago and I've been coming to Marxism since I was in my mum's uterus. And I feel like there's a bit of me that has been waiting for this to happen for 27 years. And you know, Marx said that capitalism, this system would be its own grave digger. And I think in that sense, you know, I rejoice in the cuts. I rejoice in this bullshit because <laughs> the bottom of the grave is dug. Like, we are at the bottom now, you know. How could they think, bless them, that they could bring in this level of austerity and people wouldn't hit their bottom and stand up and say, fuck you, because, you know, people can't get to that level and keep quiet. So, um... Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you and share my hope. And, you know, when I went to study, this shit wasn't going on. And so I say to you guys who are in the universities, thank you and take the hope and take the encouragement. And no, you're not insane. Everybody else who doesn't know this stuff yet, they're the ones still locked in the box of insanity. And let's go forward together. I really think you couldn't have this discussion anywhere else on the planet at this moment in time and it's really a, it's really a predicament of our tradition, of the IS tradition, that you can have such a brilliant meeting that brings together students and workers because it, does, it doesn't come automatically that Gigi says students and workers unite and fight. It's the slogan that we took to the student demonstrations here in London, it's the slogan that's being echoed in Germany by our comrades, it's the slogan that is being echoed by the Spanish comrade who spoke so, so, so brilliantly. Just one thing to the Irish comrade, we did actually put on the socialist worker leaflet, we should follow the way of the Irish students on the <laughs> The Egyptians actually imitated us in, uh, in storming their party. <laughs> so, um, all for that. I think there's there's one important, really contribution that I wanted to make, which is namely that it's a generation which has been brought up on the kind of belief that protesting doesn't do anything. The kind of belief that you have two million people out in the streets and against the Iraq War, and the Iraq War goes ahead. And then came Milbank, and what did people said? Well, protesting doesn't do anything. So we're going to take more radical forms of action. And then the more radical forms of action, of laying siege onto Parliament Square and building barricades, didn't work. What did they say? Well, we're going to take more radical forms of action. And then the summer uprisings, as I refer them to, to uh, happen in, in August. What I want to say, and I want to finish off with is, the youth can really, as they said in 1968, as Chris Harmon put in his work in The Fire Last Time, that students acted as a detonator to wider class struggles. And that's what we're experiencing at, at this moment in time. But there's an addition to that. Because at this moment in time, the youth are not drawn from the ranks of the establishment. They're drawn from the ranks of the working class. And that has the potential to lay a new revolutionary movement, to lay a new revolutionary parties, to grow in massive numbers as we have never seen before. We have seen how a small number of people can make a massive impact, a massive political impact. But let's just wait for the autumn and build for the autumn more than wait for it and, <laughs> and continue the struggle. If, and remember the slogan, students and workers unite and fight and make sure to join the SMP. Um, the new right thinkers suggest that the unrest was not caused by the... Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, not by the murder of Mark Duggan, but purely the youth of Britain jumping on the rising band bandwagon. Um, stereotyping these um, those involved as uneducated and yachts. However, clearly that is the flaw of the coalition government, failing to work against the lack of education. 
the new, um, the new eradication of GCSEs and the ridiculous increase in university fees makes educational achievement further unattainable. How do you expect to mend broken Britain when the coalition government is only alienating the working class and is clearly detached with the problem? They're the reason Britain is supposedly broken. Thank you very much. For me, one of the worst things about the mainstream media's depiction of the riots is, quite frankly, how straight-up racist and classist all of it was. It had echoes of the Watts riots, LA, Brixton. It's the same way they spoke about people. Um, and it's, it's disgusting backward. But the thing is, they, they talk about all of this bullshit, um, feral youth, broken Britain, dysfunctional families. They seem to forget that they killed a man, one of thousands that they've killed over the years. Um, and <laughs> The crackdown, the, the crackdown that followed the riot was an intensification, I think, of the kind of crackdown that was seen after the student uprisings. And that, it, it featured all night courts so that they could get, basically, the most unjust prosecutions possible and just rush people through the system and straight into prison. In anticipation of the Olympics, they've invented the Olympics offence and have said, we'll do the same thing, we're already preparing courts to be open. That sounds like an invitation to me, as if, Tens of th as of 10,000 troops, thousands of cops, thousands of private security guards and missiles on our roofs wasn't enough already. Yeah. Um, now the thing is, um, after, after a day like Millbank, after Parliament Square, after the August riots, you go home and you, and you think at dawn a battering ram is going to come through your door. And what we've seen in places like Tunisia and Egypt, when we see an intensification of struggle, where you get mass uprisings, where you get mass strikes, where you get an actual drawing to, um, a, a grinding to a halt of the capitalist apparatus by workers who can actually seize it to a halt. Then the next day, you can be in a situation where there are no cops to take a battering ram to your door, where there is no state for them to protect, where there is essentially an opportunity for us to build our own future for the first time. Hi comrades, uh, I'm Pete, I'm from the SWP from Bristol. Um, I just wanted to talk about the August riots and prior to that in Bristol. Um, in April, just before the August riots, we had two riots in quick succession. The first was due to the eviction of a squat and uh, a heavy anti-Tesco's campaign in an area that's been heavily gentrified. What we saw was the police absolutely get an absolute beating, which was great to see. Um, hey. yeah. <laughs> After a week of rank intimidation, police profiling, like stop and searches everywhere, you know, back on the streets again, and the kids are kicking off, we beat them again, you know, we come to August, we still haven't got enough, we beat them again, for the same reasons Alex, Alex explains, racial profiling, the intimidation in all the areas that we live in. Um, but lastly, I really want to kind of come on to the fact, we've got a comrade that was arrested and put in prison for this, um, when we've got Bob Diamond walking free. You know, they call, they call us the feral underclass. Who's really feral in this? Yeah, I'd like to say a couple of things about the the miners in Spain. You know that we have this this incredible strike and fight of the the, the miners. You, you have seen the photographs. Most of them are young people between 22 and 35 years. That's a proof that the young people is not quiet, it's not uh, indeed, it's not broken in their, in their sense of, of collective uh, power. And they are showing how important is the sense, the feeling of belonging to the working class, to the working class, because they have, they have that, that culture. The culture of the of the working class fighting in big uh, workplaces where almost everyone is unionized. But we have to be we have to, to see what the reality it is, and the, the vast majority of young people is not living an experience like that one in their own workplaces if they are working. Uh, the, the vast majority of, of young people is confronting precarity and the power of the bosses over their labor relationships has done this. So we have to fight, we have to fight against this sense of individualism and to reconstruct, re rebuild, rebuild the feeling of belonging to, to the working, to the working class. So that, that is why it's so important 
to join the students to the workers every, every time uh, that we have the, the choice to do it. Because it's the first time that it, you, you can get the first time where young people um, have contact with organized workers. We saw this clearly, very clear in the general strike in Spain. We organized people coming from the M15 movement with uh, saying that, well, the working class does not exist anymore. There are no workers. Capitalism is changing. When you put them in a general strike in a pickle line with workers, all those shit it's goes, goes away. <laughs> And the second thing to break all those lies is that you have to be organized in revolutionary organization where the young people is organized with adults, students with workers, precarious workers with fixed workers with, with a good uh, situation. I, uh, the only thing I'd like to say is that if you are not organized, you have to be in the SWP or other revolutionary organization of the IST. Thank you. I'm just going to be very brief. Um, I, just, I just wanted to touch on something that Gigi said about the radicalisation of young people um, that has happened over the past few, few years. And you know, I think it's essential that as as the youth and as students, we've got to help drive the fight back, and we've got to be prepared for one hell of a fight. Um, because at the end of the day, we are the workers of tomorrow, and we're going to be carrying this on our shoulders for a very, very long time. So we've got to be ready, and we've got to be prepared, and we've got to have a lot of stamina. Um, but I think we can do it. And and we stand in solidarity, of course, with the youth. We stand in solidarity with the students. And we stand in, so stand in solidarity with the workers on their picket lines. And we also stand in solidarity with those who are being politically victimised by the ruling class and, and the police, whilst we struggle against them. Um, so, uh, 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 as the comrade who talks about the DTRTP conference, the Defend the Right to Process conference, I suggest that people go along to that and sign up to that, um, because that's, it'll be really enlightening and, and really eye-opening um, to, to you know how people are being scapegoated um, so viciously. Um, now, for those of you who have joined the SWP, welcome. Um, and for those who haven't yet, join us. Um, and and I'll see you in November on on Cameron's doorstep. <laughs> well, I, I just want to say uh, what you uh, guys could do to help Egypt uh, and the Egyptian revolution because you know uh, lots of uh, people who are watching what's happening in the Arab world and are looking at Egypt and saying, well, I don't know what, what I can do here in London, but I, I can tell you, and I think all the comrades who came here and spoke uh, very eloquently about organization, and yes, you can and you will uh, affect the Egyptian revolution quite uh, positively if you do get organized here in London with the SWP or with any other, uh, you know, uh, revolutionary group. Uh, your fight and your struggle is part of our fight and our struggle and vice versa. What happens in Egypt does affect you in London and what happens in London does affect us in Egypt. And this solidarity work really does matter and is really our power uh, and, uh, and what, we can, what we can do um, to help both sides and to definitely win. Um, you know, when Miguel uh, said uh, that you have to be there and fight, uh, this is absolutely true. I mean, if you're just watching and reading headlines and even engaging in, you know, analytical debates and so on, this is all great and all, but I mean, it's nothing like being there at the picket line, in the protest, in the strike, talking to the people, listening to their uh, struggle and, and, and doing something about it. And that does start by getting involved and getting organized. Uh, I, you know, we in Egypt as revolutionary socialists are, uh, for us, getting organized is, is, is something uh, of, of, of a life, basically. It's life or death for us. It's, it's the life of the revolution or the defeat of the revolution. If we are not able to organize the, uh, the working class, uh, we could all see this go. So uh, I urge you to connect with the SWP for solidarity work uh, to Egypt and to uh, buy our um, um, socialist paper. Well, we do need donations, so um, you know, be kind and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>